exploration game is a pretty broad category. Tons of games have exploration. So today, we're rounding up some new and upcoming games throughout 2024 that just provide some good exploration. Games that encourage you to go around and, well, look for stuff. We got 10 or so games, so let's get started off with number 10. This is a big obvious one, but it's Star Wars Outlaws. We're expecting to see this game this year, and this is a big open world Star Wars adventure. Star Wars Outlaws, though, is significant because it's the first Star Wars game in a minute where you're not wielding a lightsaber. You're a scoundrel type character, like a Han Solo hopping from a couple of planets, exploring these worlds and getting into all kinds of adventures. Now, we're talking about it as an exploration game because the developers at Ubisoft have gone on record saying that the game is pretty big and the couple of planets you visit have a good sense of size to them, apparently. They said they made the area sizes big enough to make it feel like you're actually journeying across a planet when you're moving from one place to the next. You're gonna be able to ride a speeder, hop off wherever you want, go wherever you want. And we're really excited to see what comes from that because Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order had some good exploration, but that was built around the structure of that Metroidvania style. This seems like it's going to be a much more open-ended exploration thing, and we're excited to see what comes of it. There's a lot of potential here, especially because Star Wars games have been pretty good recently. So fingers crossed, Star Wars Outlaws has some really good exploration when it seemingly drops towards the end of 2024. Next over at number nine, we have Dune Awakening. Now, this one, the trailers make this game look really awesome, but it's still hard to tell what it's actually gonna look like at the end of the day. We've talked about this in other videos where it is an MMO RPG sandbox survival game. So it's gonna take a while to really form impressions of it. And as of right now, it doesn't have a release date, but at the very least there are signups right now for a beta and we're excited to see how this goes down because to be frank, we want to explore Arrakis. Obviously the world has Dune fever right now, but the potential is there for some really cool sense of discovery. Now I know it's a planet just filled with sand Sand, but there's caves and rocks and other stuff. There's definitely some good that could come from this. I mean, who wouldn't want to explore Arrakis in a video game? <laughs> That's me. We're really hoping this one is good. No release date yet, but we're expecting to see more of it this year. Next over at number eight, we have Rise of the Ronin. This is from the developers of Neo and Neo 2 and Ninja Gaiden, Wolong Fallen Dynasty. They've done a lot in recent years and Rise of the Ronin looks like a different direction. There's more story and a, seemingly a lot more exploration. You're traveling around a historical period of Japan that is very distinct. We don't see it in a lot of games and we've already seen a lot of traversal with like glider mechanics, a grappling hook, uh, wilderness, towns, cities, it seems like there's gonna be a lot of exploring and a lot of journeying around here. On foot, on horseback, uh, we're excited to see what comes of this and thankfully it's releasing pretty soon at the end of March. Next over number seven, we have Pal World, the massive hit game for Xbox and PC and Steam uh, really took the world by storm and it's still just an early access game. There's a lot more to come from it, but from right now, it's essentially a big open world kind of Breath of the Wild survival game with some Pokemon elements. You're catching creatures, you're journeying out, you're battling them, you're crafting, you're building, you're doing a lot in this game. And there is a good sense of exploration here, particularly because there are hidden caves, there are boss towers, there are towns. The towns are kind of unfinished, but there's a lot out there. And of course, the further you go, the more regions, areas, biomes you dive into, the more unique creatures you'll find. It's just like Pokemon. You want to explore more because you want to find more of these cool, powerful, weird creatures. And Pal World definitely delivers there. Like I said, the game is still in early access. There's a lot that needs to be added here. So I expect the exploration to only get better over time, more meaningful items, crafting items, weapons, more pals or whatever they're called. I don't know. There's a lot they can do here. We're excited for the potential because it's already pretty cool. Next over at number six, we have Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. This is a big open action RPG adventure with some pretty cool combat. With the trailers that we've seen, you're fighting with Flintlock pistols and ax, some magical abilities. There's definitely a lot that can go down here, but also this game is being billed as having a large open battlefield, just a world you explore and adventure through. And sometimes we just like a good old fashioned action adventure RPG. We get them all the time, but like in terms of high profile ones, as of right now, we only see a couple for 2024. And we haven't talked about this one too much in other videos, so we figured we'd give it a 
dimension. We don't know if it's going to be good, but we're going to see it this year and we're going to judge for ourselves. Next over at number five, we have Enshrouded. This is a big open action survival RPG that you can play with friends online or alone, and it is ambitious. There is a lot to this one, but the biggest thing we got to highlight is the world itself. It's absolutely gorgeous and detailed and cool. The world is voxel based. There's a lot you can do with it. And so far, people are really enjoying it. It is this massive realm of Embervale and part of it is shrouded in mystery. And that's almost like a whole sub region you can risk your life exploring in between the normal, you know, caves, forests, woods, mountains type stuff. There's a lot of exploring. The world is staggeringly massive and you get a lot of mobility options and ways to explore it. And it's how the game just pushes you forward and pushes you through it that's really interesting. If you're on PC and you haven't looked into Enshrouded yet, you definitely should. Next over at number four, we have Dragon's Dogma. This is a big one. This is one of the most anticipated RPGs of the year. And although we haven't gotten our hands on it yet at the time of making this video, we're big fans of the original game. And that game had some great exploration. So we're expecting more of that here. We've seen a lot of cool enemy types, character builds, NPCs, companions, really just stuff that to us gives us the sense that Dragon's Dogma 2 is just a bigger, badder, crazier Dragon's Dogma, which means to us, hopefully there's a lot more to explore. The creatures look massive, the world looks massive, and therefore the adventuring looks pretty massive, and we're really excited to finally get our hands on this thing soon. We hope it's good, at least as good as the first one. That would be a win. Next over at number three, we have Avowed. This is Obsidian's next big RPG. They're the creators of stuff like Fallout New Vegas, most recently uh, The Outer Worlds. So they know a thing or two about RPG goodness and exploration, and we're thinking Avowed really will take things to the next level. From what we've seen so far, it does look like it has a pretty deep, rich world worth exploring. We've seen towns and NPCs, we've gotten glimpses, but we don't really know yet how big it's actually gonna be. But still, a fantasy RPG adventure from Obsidian is something that we're always gonna pay attention to. And although the most recent gameplay reveal left us feeling a little unsure of certain things like combat and some elements, uh, we just need to see more. As long as it has that obsidian feel, you know, the DNA they brought to their previous games, we're really excited to check this one out. Next over at number two, we have Pacific Drive, a driving sci-fi exploration game that is not open world, but still really manages to create a good sense of exploration. It's got a little bit of survival elements to it because you're hunting for crafting components to essentially upgrade your jalopy car with back to the future style parts you bolt onto the car just to survive and get through these harsh environments kind of like a post-apocalyptic thing i really have to paraphrase and shorten the description of this game because it is complicated but that sense of exploration really comes in because the drives are harrowing you're running over things and getting flat tires you're running out of gas uh, your view is obscured by fog or rain or roadblocks there's always a challenge in your way that makes the journey feel long and like a true big old adventure every time you set out in this kind of roguelite setting. And again, to hop out of your car and wander around in the woods really gives you that sense of exploration because half the time you're just looking for stuff to survive, let alone fix up your car. And the act of taking stuff, finding goodies and junk and treasures and bringing it back to your car, opening up the trunk, putting that stuff in the trunk, shutting it, and driving away just feels like a real exploration adventure. More than we've seen or felt in any other games recently. So it's absolutely worth highlighting. It's not a game for everybody because it can be very challenging and frustrating as hell, but pushing through, it really gives you a great sense of adventure. Now down to number one, we have Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl. This is the big one. We've been looking forward to this one for a while. And this is another game where you're in a post-apocalyptic setting. You're going out into these irradiated zones, fighting for survival, fighting against others, but also trying to research and discover scientific anomalies in this weird, strange world. This is of course the follow-up to the classic Stalker games that really revolutionized PC gaming for a lot of people. They were just really cool and unique and had a good sense of survival survival exploration. This time around now with Stalker 2, uh, we've gotten glimpses of gameplay that look absolutely stunning. 
Some of the visuals on screen here are out of this world good. We really hope the game can live up to the original's pedigree, but also just what we've seen in videos and trailers so far, because visually that is a world I want to explore. It looks so detailed and mysterious and dour that despite being like a Chernobyl post-apocalyptic like a radiated zone type of thing something we've seen in a lot of video games and media before they seem like they're doing it different here and that's what makes the stalker games special after many delays it seems like we're finally getting this one this year that could still change but as of right now we're looking forward to playing it now, those were 10 games. We got some bonus games we got to throw in, of course. Little Devil Inside. We don't know if this one is coming this year, but we did just recently get a big new trailer breaking down some gameplay, and there is a lot of cool exploration here. Also, uh, you know, some people didn't think it was going to count, but Final Fantasy Rebirth has a lot of exploration, some really big areas, a lot of side quests. Getting around in this game is worth it. Also, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. You're gonna have a whole island to explore in this driving game. You know, if you like a Forza Horizon or a Burnout Paradise, you like driving around, exploring, this might be your thing. Also, if we're talking about games that we don't know whether or not they're really gonna release this year, we do have to mention Hollow Knight Silk Song. This was slated for like the end of 2023. We didn't see it. So it's gotta be 2024 at this point, right? They've been working on it for so long. And we wanna mention this game as an exploration game because it's a Metroidvania style game. The previous was one of the better Metroidvania style games to release in a couple of years. So Hollow Knight Silk Song can really push that forward. There's so much that they can do with this one and we, honestly we just want to see more i think the whole world is waiting to see more at this point along with that we have to mention hello games is light no fire this is an ambitious game that they revealed in 2023 uh, the creators of no man's sky which does give people some pause but uh, essentially this is a game where you can explore an entire planet either alone or persistent multiplayer at least that's what we're gleaming from the trailers and i gotta say if they actually pull this off i think they've learned a lot of lessons from no man's sky this could be something i mean look at this the planet looks vast with tons of biomes this looks like something we really want to explore and is like the perfect example for this video oh and one more of course we have to mention elden ring shadows of the Erd tree dlc this is coming this year people have been waiting for a long time since elden ring took the world by storm and and it's the best to mention because Elden Ring had some incredible exploration. The amount of things that we just stumbled upon and discovered in the base game, that sense of discovery was just perfect. So for From Software to give us a new region, apparently as big as Limgrave from the original game, uh, there's a lot of new stuff we can probably stumble upon. We'll find out for sure though when it releases later this year. But again, those are 10 exploration games in 2024 that we're looking forward to, but I gotta be totally honest, there are way more than 10. We couldn't fit them all on this list. Every game has a dash of exploration, so let us know your picks in the comments. We'd love to hear from you, and uh, if you like this video and you like talking games with us every day, click on the like button is all you gotta do. It really helps us. And if you're new, maybe consider, I don't know, subscribing, hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.